When was the last time a mainline Pokemon game made you cry? Maybe it was N's farewell? Was it Lily's bittersweet reunion with her mother in the Ultra Space? Maybe it was when Chairman Rose interrupted the Olympics to summon the Apocalypse. Or maybe mainline Pokemon hasn't made you cry, which is also totally understandable. Because surely you at least cried over Explorers of Sky. You aren't human if you didn't. But my point is, I find spin-off Pokemon games, ahem, <coughs> mystery dungeon, ahem, <coughs> tend to be the king of tear-jerking scenes and stories in Pokemon. Mainline Pokemon moments that get you tearing up are often few and far between. Which is why I am absolutely floored with the amount of emotion Scarlet and Violet decided to put me through. I beat the game yesterday, and it had me in an absolute mess of tears as I went through the endings of the stories they tell us. I have never cried like that for a mainline Pokemon game. Like, ever, I don't think. Scarlet and Violet may be plagued by a myriad of issues, some related to performance and some not, but the storytelling these games offer is, in my opinion, the best we've ever gotten out of a mainline game. So, for anyone on the edge about Scarlet and Violet, I am here to tell you why the story in these games is worth your time, should such a thing interest you. This video is spoiler free, by the way, but it will mention a few characters in the story that were unrevealed in official trailers and marketing prior to release of the game. As we all know, the primary setting and theme for Scarlet and Violet is the Pokemon Academy that you attend as a student, alongside other classmates. I was on the fence about this prior to playing the game, mostly because I didn't know how much the school aspect was really going to matter in the long run. And the truth is that it doesn't, if you choose to ignore it. But the game actually allows you to take classes run by various teachers, with more unlocking as you progress through the game. I decided to take every single class for a spin, and I am so happy that I did. I became more attached to the teachers and faculty of this fictional Pokemon school than I ever did any of my real-life teachers. What's fun about the classes is that they genuinely offer good information to people who are new to Pokemon and want to learn things. They teach you about breeding, types, new effectiveness, lore, in-game mechanics such as picnics and character customization, and more. But even if you're a seasoned expert pro-gamer like I am, I still found the classes super fun to attend just to hear what the teachers have to say. You get asked a question every class and even take exams based on the subjects. Meaning you also get to flex your knowledge as you go. Even the math class makes everything about Pokemon, as they mostly deal with in-battle math stats like critical hit chances and super effective move multipliers. Taking the classes also allow you to become closer with the faculty themselves by following little storylines with each teacher outside of the class. This is something totally new to Pokemon, and is a feature I really hope sticks around in the future. Some of my favorite teachers include the home ex teacher Saguaro, who has a masculine appearance but loves cooking, caring for Pokemon, and sweet food. I also love the history teacher Ryfort, who's honestly just funny. She gets less interested in topics the closer they get to being modern day, as she starts to get bored of her teaching curriculum when she gets up to history events that were as recent as 10 years ago. I also love that you can see the original Pokeball and a picture of Laventon on her board. That's a good callback. Clavel, the director of the Academy, is a huge breath of fresh air as far as old men in Pokemon go. As he's a genuinely caring and responsible school director, and is obsessed with trying to keep up with what's hip and cool with the kids these days. Overall, the school setting ended up being one of my favorite aspects of these games. It is something you can more or less ignore outside of having to go back to the school for a few story-related reasons here and there, but if you choose to take time to attend the classes and talk to the teachers, you'll find an absolutely wonderful cast of characters that you'd otherwise just look over. Moving on from the school aspect, whether you've played the games or not, you probably know the story centers around three separate storylines that you can follow at your own pace and choosing. This is part of the Treasure Hunt theme, an independent study project where you essentially go out on an adventure and do whatever you want, all the while finding your own personal treasure along the way. 
This ties the school theme in greatly with the open world exploration aspect, since it is a great excuse to say you're still doing your schoolwork while you're off doing all sorts of things that are not related to school directly. The story of the Victory Road Path is your standard Pokemon Gym Challenge plot. While it is good and enjoyable, it doesn't have anything particularly stand out about it. That being said, it's absolutely perfect in that sense. Let me take Sword and Shield as a case study in this topic. Sword and Shield mostly focused on the gym challenge as its plotline, like the game was almost purely about taking on the gyms and battling your rivals. But here and there, they did try to mix some evil teams and villainous shenanigans into the mix, but in the end, some of you may feel that the non-gym related plotlines of Sword and Shield felt a little half-baked. No shade to Sword and Shield. I love those games, but it makes for an interesting comparison. In the case of Scarlet and Violet, they took the gym challenge plotline and completely removed the evil team plot from it. Instead, as you know, making the evil team plotline its own entire story you can tackle independently of the gym plotline. This worked out seemingly brilliantly for the writing team. The gym challenge story is unaffected and enjoyable in its simplicity, and the evil team plotline is just as fleshed out as I hoped it would be. In addition, the third storyline, in which you take on Titan Pokemon, is also completely separate from the others, and it too is just as engaging and interesting in its own right. The three stories coexist in the world together, and they all feel like they got the attention they deserved writing-wise. Overall, I am very happy with the decision to split these stories up. It may seem like they're three completely disconnected adventures, and well, uh, they are, but if you see all three of them through to the end, then you're in for what I think is one of the best finales for a Pokemon game in a long time. Let's talk about some more characters, outside of the school faculty, because the ones you meet and battle along the treasure hunt are seriously fantastic. Nimona, notably, is an incredible change of pace for a rival. She starts out already having beaten the entire Pokemon League in Paldia. She's already a champion level trainer, with a champion level team, but she goes out of her way to train and use Pokemon that are at your level just because she loves battling you so much. She could easily wipe you out with her strongest champion grade team, but chooses not to, and when you finally get to fight her at her full power, it is satisfying. I love Nimona, and she really is just the surface of the other great characters in the games. Arvin and Penny, the stars of the other two roots in the game, both made me cry on separate occasions. I'm not going into talking about them due to spoilers, but trust me, there is a rabbit hole here and it is worth following because holy cow, Arvin is very well a new addition to my favorite Pokemon boys. To speak on a few more characters, all the Team Star bosses are super fun and engaging characters, offering their own backstories and actually going into detail about the team's history and how they all came to meet each other. Something that isn't actually that common for other evil teams in Pokemon. And yes, I know evil team is a very loose term these days. No, Team Star is not necessarily evil. But all I can say is that they're just about on the same level to me as Team Skull, which honestly is very high praise. I was also pleasantly surprised to really enjoy every single gym leader in the game. My personal favorite absolutely has to be Larry, the normal type specialist who is literally just a dude who sees his position as a gym leader as a regular job that he shows up to for a paycheck. He's just... A businessman with a briefcase, giving it whatever he needs to get paid. And honestly, it's amazing. I love Larry. Another reason I'm so enamored with this game's story is the fact that there is so much room for more, and definite evidence that there's likely going to be more as well. As you'll play, especially through the finale of the story, you'll find there's hints scattered around of there being more at play behind the scenes, especially related to the terrestrializing phenomenon present in the Paldea region. These games have set themselves up with an amazing cast, a great story already at play, and plenty of room to expand on the lore with more story. 
Also, there is literally a section of the map that you just can't enter, and it's covered in clouds on the official art, so yeah, there's like, something going on over there. <laughs> Honestly, there is not much more I can say without having to go into spoiler territory. Really, I can just reiterate that I am absolutely floored with the direction this game took and how hard-hitting its themes were. I used to definitely regard either Black or White or maybe Sun and Moon as having the best mainline stories for Pokémon, but I firmly believe that they have been dethroned. I definitely am itching to make a deep dive video about all of it, but it's something I really want to save until the game has had more time for lots of people to play it and complete it. Then we'll have more people who can engage and discuss the story with us. Now I gotta stop rambling. Point is, this game's story rules. And I definitely think that the story is worth your time, especially if you're seeking something new from the franchise writing-wise. I know I definitely was, and I was not left unsatisfied. For anyone watching who has finished the story, what did you think? I'd really like to know if the ending hit anyone quite as hard as it hit me. But please, no spoilers in the comments for anyone who may be browsing around who hasn't played or finished the game for themselves. Regardless, thank you always for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Woo! Oh, ah!